Welcome back to the big question tonight. Our guest, Deputy President William Ruto, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for making time for the big question tonight. Thank you very much. Jeremy. Right, and, right, and keep talking to us on double two four double two on Twitter using the hashtag. Uh, the big question. We'll be looking at your feedback as we go on with this interview. I'll start with the very latest. Uh, your Excellency, the government has today uh, moved to ban or outlaw any rallies by court on grounds that they are turning violent. First, do you think this is the right move, and is it constitutional for the government to do that? Um, Hussein. Let me first say thank you very much for having me in your studio mm -hmm. and uh, to discuss a very important subject that is currently uh, we are seized over as a country. And I, I, I rarely come along with a constitution, but this time I decided to come with one. Okay. All of us, every person, you know, we have a duty to uphold the constitution and it is written in the constitution itself and let me let me read just one section of that constitution it says every person section three of the constitution every person has an obligation to respect uphold and defend this constitution section 37 of the constitution that provides for the right of citizens to assembly demonstration picketing and uh, petition it says very clearly every person has the right peacefully and unarmed mm -hmm. to as assemble to demonstrate to picket and to present petitions to public authority. authorities now Hussein even if you wanted to bury your head in the sand what we have seen is the unfortunate loss of life which we regret huge destruction of property around the country which is unnecessary and regrettable and you just need to look at our TV screens does that to look, look to anybody as peaceful and unarmed the kind of destruction going on around the country is shameful right and it can only degenerate into anarchy unless somebody steps in and this is why we have we uh, 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 the government of Kenya has respected the Constitution mm -hmm. when the courts say the uh, court have a right to assemble they have assembled they have the court say the other day they have a right to demonstrate they they, they enjoy that right but even if the, if the figures we are hearing in the newspaper in the, in the media is anything to go by in one day in Kisumu we lost a billion shillings that is not in the Constitution Hussein right that is not and 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 and, and really uh, I don't think the court fraternity can defend the demonstrations that are going on right as peaceful and uh, with people who are unarmed. The, you need the, to look the, the at the, the, the headlines of the newspapers today. Right. The court fraternity has been saying it is the police uh, that have been uh, making these rallies or, or, or protests a turn violent. But I'm not here to talk about or to defend what court has done. Yeah. Uh, but it's not everywhere we have seen destructive or violent demonstrations. Mm. In Nairobi, for instance, uh, yesterday, we actually saw court peace marshals moving around and forming a ring uh, around their protesters and there was no problem. Have you asked the people in Nairobi over the last uh, four weeks the kind of hell they've gone through? Did you hear the Matatu Welfare Association? Have you heard the Matatu Owners Association? Have you heard the businessmen in Kisumu? Right. We, uh, these we, are people, innocent Kenyans who are who are who are who are who are going about their own business but they are being affected by these demonstrations right we have had we have had like, like you said we've had all these people complain I was just giving an instance in Nairobi yesterday because the designated area where they notified the police was they're going to march around town and up to uh, around uh, uh, besides the anniversary towers up to Uhuru Park and that specific area we didn't have any issues but let me take you back to the court order that you've been talking about by Justice uh, Odunga. Mm. He said, and I quote him here, in my view, 
the police under, un, under, are under an obligation to protect innocent Kenyans from being harassed by the people attending the said rally and also to ensure that other persons do not unlawfully disrupt the same. The police ought to work hand in hand with the organizers of the said rally to ensure that peace and order is maintained before, during and after the said rally. So the police or state cannot purport to curtail the exercise of constitutional rights unless exceptions under the constitution as shown uh, exist. What he's saying here is police should have handled this together with court. We didn't see this when court notified the police on Sunday. What we saw is the Nairobi PPO saying there were actually uh, bombs or you know, explosives being planned to be used on Monday, which we didn't see. Would it have been different if police worked with court? And it's the work of the police to ensure if somebody is becoming a hooligan or being armed, they are arrested. Hussein, you know, there are things that are easier said and difficult to do. If you watch uh, some of the demonstrators, people who are coming to a demonstration armed, they have not come to participate in a, in a peaceful demonstration. They have come already prepared, armed, to come and, 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 and cause mayhem. If you look at the kind of destruction of property that happened, and I, and I, and I want to tell you, you can, we can assume, we can pretend, we can bury our heads in the sand that nothing is going on, but my friend, we are destroying the country. Let me tell you, uh, yesterday I had a, a telephone call from um, one of the most profitable companies in Kenya, run by uh, somebody who is not a Kenyan. And he called me and told me, Mr. Deputy President, what is really going on? Because people are beginning to ask questions. How safe is Kenya when you have street battles, when you have uh, street uh, demonstrations every day, every other day, every Monday. Now it is going to be Monday and Thursday, and, and who knows how, what frequency is going to follow. By the way, Hussein, what we are doing to the country today with these street engagements is not different from what the Al Shabaab is doing to us. What do you mean? These are people. I, I, these are I, people. No, let me let me explain. Who are let, me the explain. ICC. let me let me explain. Okay. What the, I, I, what the, what the Al-Shabaab and terrorists want Kenya to do, they want Kenya to instill fear in Kenya, right? They want to sabotage the economy of Kenya. They want to create an impression that this place is unsafe and this place you cannot do business. What we are doing with the street battles, if you look at the cancellations of hotel bookings, if you look at the cancellations of our tourist uh, engagements, if you look at the concern and the fear in the, in the business community, it achieves the same thing. You so what, you what we are doing is we are destroying the economy of our country. We are destroying the future of our young people right. Fast. in the quest for us as leaders. Because what is this demonstration about, Hussein? It's about IBC, but fast, fast, when you talk about... No, what is it is about... How William Ruto and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, Raila Odinga and uh, a few people are going to be elected. It is, it is not about the ordinary but Kenyan who today does not have a job. But we have seen ordinary Kenyans participate in this protest. And, 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 to, and, and to compare it, absolutely. To, to, compare it to Al Shabaab. Yeah. Al Shabaab is a ragtag militia, is a militia. I mean, this is something that is provided for I am in the constitution. You, I, am, I, am, I am telling you, the end result of what we are doing, it, it ends in the same way. The moment the whole business community are telling us they are in fear, the same way they would be in fear if we had a terrorist attack here, the same way we are damaging property, the same way, I mean, we, we are taking the country in the wrong, in the wrong direction, okay. Hussein. Do you believe and, that? And we better, we better tell each other the truth. Okay. We, we, cannot, we, we cannot pretend that what we are doing is adding any value to our country. Do you believe then, uh, because you have to move on, do you believe when such protests are held, there can be criminal elements that uh, use such protests to pursue other means, or hooligans? Do you believe such happens? I mean, it is possible. I mean, these are possibilities, you right. know. And, and we are not saying all the demonstrators that are participating with the court are, are hooligans. Right. You know, there are, are, are people there. But 
people, uh, situations arise where criminals, crooks, and you know, all manner of people take advantage so of situations. It, so, do, do the police have a role in this? The police have a role. With a the very clear sure role. That, that so, this thing is peaceful. Whoever is organizing these demonstrations should be concerned. They should be bothered that what do we do so that these demonstrations do not degenerate into what we what demonstrations are not supposed to be. You know, they should be concerned. Right. But but if before even you are concerned about what is happening on the Mondays, you are seeing the newspapers are full of stones, full of cars burning. And then you tell the country we are going to in, we are going now to double. I mean, it raises a question about how you are concerned about what is going on do in your country. Right, uh, fair enough. But do you think the police have any role to play or have they failed in any Absolutely. way? First of all, have you, did you see three weeks ago, it was everywhere and the police were accused of using excessive force. So far, about four people have died. Even a child was shot yesterday. Do you think the police were, I mean, I mean they're saying their investigations are going on, but do you think that was justified? Let me tell you, uh, Hussein, as we talk today, there is nobody from the president downwards who is above the law, right? Every citizen, including the police, are subject to the law. And there are institutions. We have the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. We have the uh, um, Independent Police Oversight Authority. Mm -hmm. We have the National Police Commission. You know, so there are institutions. If, they are, if the police are failing in their duty, there are institutions that will make sure that whoever is culpable is brought to book. So if the police have not done what they should, and, and mark you, uh, the Inspector General of Police, is an independent office who does not take instructions from anybody, right? He is supposed to discharge his responsibility in accordance with the constitution. Okay. The right. colleague is saying they may refer some of these cases, the use of excessive of, of, uh, force mm -hmm. to the ICC. I like that, is, that is their right. They, they can refer uh, cases uh, uh, because every citizen today can go to court to defend their rights or to demand uh, action on whoever they think has gone uh, has gone overboard. Right. I hope in the process they will also pros they will also take to court the criminals who took advantage of these demonstrations and they are on TV looted, d destroyed property, caused mayhem. I, I hope in the process when they are taking whoever they think has uh, gone overboard, they will also take those ones. Uh, I'd like to read a text here now. Somebody says, "I've asked my next question." Ask the deputy president. This is uh, Nicodemus Situa in Molo. If they really love Kenya as a nation of diverse cultures, uh, what will the Jubilee government lose if it engages in dialogue? We are going to the dogs if this matter is not uh, being addressed amicably. The rhetoric, rhetoric rather, should be turned down. Today, the government has banned or outlawed this protest. The Code Coalition has said such a thing will not happen, and they are saying they will do it even twice as from next week, twice quickly. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, is it just a game of egos? Who does it help? Let me tell you, Hussein. Let, let's go back a bit. Hussein, we, ba we passed a new constitution. Why did we pass a new constitution? We passed a new constitution, Hussein, because we wanted to get rid of an imperial presidency. Mm -hmm. Right? We wanted the business of Kenya to be determined in a predictable way where everybody is under the law. The old constitution, the president was above the law. Today, the president is subject to the law. And so is everybody. I find it uh, very, you know, I, I, fi I find it n not, not correct. We are being told today, and the court fraternity have told us to our face. In fact, uh, Wetangula told us when I was sitting with the president in Kakamega, he told us, gentlemen, who said that uh, we cannot have a political dialogue outside the constitution? In other words, who said we cannot transact the business of the country outside the constitution? Y you know, who said that we must follow the constitution? My friend, Hussein, the moment we try to run away from the constitution and what it says, we are on a very slippery path. 
And, and the difference between us and code, and let me put it very clear this mm -hmm. evening, the difference between us and code is the following. What we are saying is, we have issues with uh, IEBC, yeah, if we may. Whoever has issues with IEBC, the Constitution clearly says this is the route. Either you bring a petition to Parliament or you go to court. Court have told us, we know what the Constitution says. We understand what the Constitution says, but we will not do it. Rather, but we will go and demonstrate. My, my friend, let me, let, me, let, Constitution. Let, let me just finish. So, we will go and demonstrate, right? So that we abandon what the Constitution says because we don't like it, force you to get out of the Constitution and have a discussion, a private discussion on the side. My friend Hussein, what is impunity? Impunity is exactly what we are being subjected to. But they know what the Constitution they, says. They, not following they the know what is right for them to do, but they have abandoned that and gone. Constitutionally, they have a right to picket. They, they have, have a right they to have a right. They have a right to picket, my friend. They have a right to picket on a matter that the Constitution says there is a way of doing it. But, but they have said they will not follow what the Constitution says can be it should be done. They want to force us to go and have a discussion outside the Constitution and avoid the, what the, the provisions of the Constitution so that we can satisfy fair enough what they want. Fair enough what you're saying, I mean, what the law says. But it's still the same law they are using, and it can be argued either way. They say the ultimate power rests with the people, and that is what they are using. And they say, and I, and I want your response to this, yeah. if you want this to be done through Parliament, they know very well, and they have said they're not confident uh, that what will be done in Parliament will be justice because of the tyranny of numbers in Parliament. Jubilee has majority of members of Parliament in Parliament. So they are saying they should just do this outside, agree outside with the same MPs, and then after that, after they have agreed, they move back to Parliament and make it uh, or amend everything through the law. What is the problem with that? That's why I came with this constitution, uh, Hussein. There are two narratives that have been created that are false. The court fraternity have told us, because all sovereign power belongs to the people, yes. the people can exercise it in whatever way they want, either directly or through uh, whatever other means. Let me read for them the first chapter of the Constitution. Chapter 1. All sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya and shall be exercised only in accordance with this Constitution. You know? When you say, we, you know, so we, let, let us not misread the Constitution because what they read, they read up to all power belongs to the people and leave it there. It can only be exercised in accordance with the Constitution. Let we, me, yeah. number, number two, number two, let me, uh, Hussein, because we need to answer these questions. Number two, the reason why we wanted a new Constitution is so that Kenya d is not run on the whims of people. One, two, three, ten. Kenya is run on the will of the people. Now, my friend, you're telling us, let us avoid what the constitu this constitution that was passed in the interest of 40 million Kenyans. We put it aside. Koda are telling us, we want a discussion between three, four, five people, Uru Kenyatta, William Ruto, Raila Odinga, and uh, whoever, may possibly this and that fellow, we go and sit somewhere and decide for the people of Kenya, avoiding what the constitution that was passed by the people is saying. My friend, why did we then tell the people okay. of Kenya, we want a people-driven constitution, we want a people-centered constitution. If we knew that that was what we were looking for, we shouldn't have bothered Kenyans to pass a new right. constitution if, like if said, we wanted to like continue a clique of us deciding for the people of Kenya. These are representatives of the people, but fair enough, like I said, uh, this can be argued either way, and they are arguing their own way in terms of the constitution. Mm. What are they saying? Sovereignty, like you said, uh, what the chapter says versus the people, and they have a right to pick it. And they know, going through parliament, they will not achieve this. First of all, do you believe IBC is currently constituted? This, does it have, do you think IBC has any problems or any challenges? And do you think, as it is currently constituted, it should deliver the 2017 election? Uh, before, before I come to that, Hussein, you say there is a problem with the numbers in Parliament. The numbers in Parliament, 
is a creation of this constitution. The people elected in parliament today were elected by the people of Kenya. They did not find their way there. It is not Jubilee who decided to have so many members in parliament. It is the people of Kenya. Right. And whoever has a quarrel with those numbers in parliament should go to an election and change the numbers. Go right. and go and persuade the people of Kenya. Right. Let me come to your question. On the matter of uh, IEBC, we have issues with IEBC. Which the same one? way, the, no, the same way we have issues with uh, other institutions. Personally, mm -hmm. I have a son who is a lawyer. I have serious issues with my chief justice having an hearing. I have a serious issue. But I, I haven't organized a demonstration because I have to respect that there are issues that, you know, I cannot change, right? As a parent, I wouldn't have a, a, ment, a, 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 a role model for my son uh, carrying an earring, you know? I, I have an issue with that, and I have made it public. Right. But what I'm saying, we have, we have problems with... How many people have issues with Salaries and Remuneration Commission? <laughs> Members of Parliament have, have issues with them. Right. So many people have issues with so many other things. Right. But there are stipulated mechanisms in the constitution that ensures that whatever issues are prosecuted in a manner that is orderly provided for by the constitution. Do you have Nobody has organized a demonstration to remove any commission or institution. Do you have any issues with the IABC? Until they are brought to us, you know, and, and you know that is what we are saying. Whoever has issues with IABC, and we would be very happy, you know, if the issues are brought on IEBC, our members of parliament are Democrats. They will be able to look at the issues. If they have merit, you know, it's this then, it's then it's our, members of issues, our, our members of parliament will make a decision and determination. What we are saying yeah. is code. And in fact, for your information, uh, my friend uh, Hussein, I have heard uh, uh, senior people in court say they even want uh, this IEBC paid so that they can leave and they should not be prosecuted for anything because it looks like the problem is not IEBC. Because why would you, why would you want to pay somebody who you say is a thief? Why, why okay. would you want to pay him off? Okay. Before we come to that, first, there was a petition to Parliament by Wafula Buke, mm -hmm. who shared see the light of the day. Correct. And it was about IEBC. Yes. You say the members are Democrats of mm. Parliament. Mm. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, argue with that. but. People have accused MPs and even the executive when it came, for example, to the issue of their parks and salaries. Mm -hmm. That sometimes reason doesn't prevail. Mm -hmm. That sometimes MPs, we've seen Jubilee MPs voting as a block and court MPs voting as a block. So, what point would it, I mean, what would, the, would be the point of this according to court going to parliament, knowing very well Jubilee will vote as a block and they have the majority? Uh, my friend. So, what is, what, what is this that we are going to do outside there, three, four, five, ten of us, which they ac accept must be brought to parliament? What will you do with, uh, with what, you what you have just said? What will you do with it? Supposing you, you go outside, supposing you go outside there, go and agree on something, mm -hmm. and when it comes to the house, it has to be subjected to a democratic house. What they are looking for, that is, that what is they are looking for, is an agreement outside the house. That and an agreement that, by that, will now, that will now see the jubilee leadership talk to the MPs. An agreement, one that is agreed upon. And jubilee leadership also talk to MPs, and we have also other stakeholders getting involved. That is what they are looking for. My friend, we are ready. You know, when uh, Cord started this uh, story about uh, wanting dialogue. Right? That was a year and a half ago. They brought three issues. They said they wanted electoral reform. They wanted to deal with the matters of corruption. They wanted to deal with matters of uh, security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We told them, as a government elected by the people of Kenya, we do not need their support in matters to do with corruption or in matters to do with security because that is why a government is elected. We will deal with those ones. And if we fail to deal with them, we have elections next year. They will explain to the people of Kenya how better they will do. And court is not, it is not their business to assist us to govern. It is their business to be the alternative government. There is a world of a difference, my friend, between alternative government. Me, William Ruto, 
I assist Uhuru Kenyatta to govern. It is not the business of court to come and assist Uhuru Kenyatta to govern. Mm -hmm. We have enough people to assist us to govern. It is them to tell the country the alternative views or alternative agenda they have. You know? So, what happened? Let me finish. What happened is that story of uh, we had challenges of insecurity because of Al-Shabaab and things like that and, and uh, corruption and what have you. As a government, we took up our responsibility and dealt with those issues. We can comfortably say we have more or less handled the situation. They went the route of looking for signatures, right? Because we told them clearly, if they want electoral reform, there is a mechanism within the constitution which right. they can deal with. They hit uh, uh, headwinds because of signatures that had diagrams and uh, animals and this what. they say wasn't done fairly to them. And we have seen somebody and, like and, somebody and, like, forget and about when they ran into trouble, into problems with the IEBC. The IEBC that they themselves helped to create, now they say these people must leave. But do you think the IEBC handled that well? And especially that we do not have a referendum law, that they handled that well? Because we saw former CIC chair Charles Nachai severally talk about, uh, to IEBC and say very clearly, do not go on with this uh, issue about court's uh, petition uh, for a referendum until a referendum so, law is in so, place. So the IEBC was supposed to pass a referendum law? So you think there's no problem? Does, does, there was no does, problem that no, there was no does, law? Does IEBC pass law? They don't. I mean, so it was a failure on us, the political class, you know, that we didn't, we didn't foresee that for us to have a referendum, we need a referendum law. So how do you blame that on IEBC? Okay, how do you if, now if claim... You if you don't blame it on IEBC, then would you say court is right to, to claim that there was no referendum law? And if there was no referendum law, so why they, do you want they, they do not know how they were dismissed. How, how, do you, how do you fire the IEBC for a failure of a law that is not their responsibility to pass? Okay, they, they, should be, they, should be, they should be talking to their own legislators. Why they didn't think through the process of a referendum. They should have thought through that if we are going the referendum route, we must first have a law to pass, uh, to, to, you know, to bring about uh, the referendum. I want to look at a clip here. Uh, this is in 2015. Uh, you said then, I don't know if you're ready with that. This is 13th February 2015, if we can, if we can listen to that. I find it a bit un contradictory to say we need investigations to uncover the death of Mushai, but we don't need investigations on what happened with IEBC. I think that is a bit contradictory. We must, we must speak the same language to every occasion. Absolutely. So that we are even and we are fair. This was during uh, the, I think, requiem mass or funeral of the late uh, George uh, Muchai. The thing you're talking about is that you can get scandal. Yep. That investigations must also be done to the IEBC, uh, uh, to Hassan and the IEBC team. That's what we're saying. Has anything changed? That's what we're saying. No person, no Kenyan, it doesn't matter who's saying how much I don't like you. Nobody should uh, uh, remove you or condemn you and hard, you know. If we want to get rid of IEBC, for heaven's sake, they are Kenyans. They applied for these jobs. They have a constitutional right to discharge the mandate that has been given to them. Mm -hmm. And if we must remove them, let's take them through due process. So my question again, has, has anything that. changed since then? It's still the same commissioners in office. It's still Hassan who is being accused of the chicken gate scandal, mm. and the investigation is going on. Mm. Has anything changed then? Do you, are you saying you have no issues with the IBC? Because you say the way to see what when, court when, will bring. When you say that uh, investigations are going on, court are telling us Hassan and his uh, team are thieves, at least from the clips I have had. So forget about investigations. They seem to have a dossier, which they can do us a lot of favor if they can come up with a favor, uh, with, a, with a dossier and say, we have confirmed reports these people have stolen this and this and the other. And I am telling you, my friend, we are very reasonable people. We will participate in the process. Our members of parliament are reasonable Kenyans. They will participate in a process that will uh, take us to a logical conclusion. But only a process that has caused uh, issues or grievances with the IBC, just saying you do not have any grievances with the IBC. You see, for us, eh, first, before you think about removing the, this IEBC, you must think through so that you then end up with what code ended up with the referendum. That you, you are simple signatures and then you discover when you have the signatures that you have no referendum law. 
the first thing that we have done as Jubilee, we have told Parliament they need to have legislation that ensures that in the event there is proven culpability on the Commission, there must be a mechanism to replace them. And for your information, mm -hmm. the Chepkonga uh, Legal Affairs Committee have already begun the process. They have already drafted law that will facilitate, you know, which, which will come, which must come ahead of any discussion on disbanding IEBC. But which is not being supported by the members of the court coalition until, within the Justice until, and Legal until, Affairs Committee. Until today, until today, when they were ordered by their party not to participate, they were participating. They are part of the decision because the law that existed provided that the president would appoint two names, the prime minister and now the president to appoint another two names, APSEA, an institution that now, now doesn't exist, will appoint a name, another uh, organization, uh, advisory board of ESCC, which now don't exist, will, part will give another name, and the Judicial Service Commission mm -hmm. will provide another name, the, 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 which now is contradictory because if the judiciary will participate later in adjudicating some yeah. uh, petitions, quarrels, quarrels, petitions yeah. then you don't want it to involve them in the process of, uh, of appointment. Okay. So the, a new law is being provided. And as Jubilee, you know, being responsible, we are saying we should do first things first. Let us, let us pass the law okay. and let us have due process on the commissioners so that if they are culpable in what one, two, three, five, all of them, then we can have a process that is above board that ensures that we can have other commissioners. Some of the structural changes I want in IBC, and this is why I asked this question and I'll ask you again, do you personally trust IBC to deliver the 2017 election as constituted? Would you have, have wanted to know, because this have been, has been asked not only by court but also other uh, stakeholders, the misgivings or problems or issues that arise in the 2013 election, failures of the EVIDs, failures of the electronic voter, um, uh, voting and electronic tallying, and other issues around IBC, wouldn't you have wanted that to be addressed, which they haven't and they have complained about? Let me tell you, uh, my friend and brother, it's good to be fair to everybody. The process of purchasing those equipments was not entirely a commission affair. In fact, it is the former Prime Minister, uh, and, and, and I want to set the record straight, who presided over the purchase of those equipment, right? Alongside many other players. So, do you sincerely want to say you can only squarely blame this on IEBC? And, and, and IEBC progressively have improved. You know, they have, they have, they have they've, they've managed now more by elections along the way and now I think and uh, I can I can uh, uh, from what they have done I think they have developed some capacity you know we must all accept that some gadgets sometimes fail mm -hmm. but did we end up with an election that reflected the will and wishes of the people of Kenya yes right okay. and, and even under those difficult circumstances the Commission still discharged its mandate and delivered an election. But people complained and there were problems that the Commission said these were uh, major problems that they, they themselves that there were problems. Absolutely. But people have, what court is saying and other stakeholders is that people have not talked about these problems. IBC has not talked about these problems. L let me tell you, uh, my friend, you know, we've had three years. Hmm? We've had three years. The, 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 the problem came when IBC rejected or told court they didn't make it to the threshold. You know, that's where the problem, that's when hell broke loose. And that's when uh, court decided these people must go. And let me also tell there, you. It was there in the referendum. Let me also, of, let, me also the let me also say, take you back a bit. You know, we have had, you know, our friends in court uh, say, oh, you see, uh, what is going on now is uh, a matter about the IEBC. They've uh, told us that, um, uh, it's not just IBC. we want to discuss the Constitution. Mm -hmm. They've told us maybe we need to set up more offices, maybe we should be thinking about Prime Minister, Deputy V's, Vice that. You know, the, the question I ask myself, Hussein, the last four elections 
has been about the constitution has been about positioning ourselves as leaders this election for a change it must be about the ordinary people and let me tell you when when i look at the way this uh, IEBC is being is being driven i look back you know the other just the the, the, the most recent debate was about eurobond you know eurobond was uh, uh, another another issue that was actually supposed to damage our economy because the, the, the story being told in the Eurobond, uh, oh, money has been lost. You know, some shadowy characters in, uh, in, in Treasury have colluded with the Reserve Bank of America, with HSBC, with uh, J.B. Morgan. My friend, J.B. Morgan is not a, a, okay. a, a, a kiosk. Right. You know, he, he, the Reserve Bank of America is not a microfinance. We look at These the are serious now. institutions, right? Right. We and you see... It is an extension from the Eurobond now, it is IEBC, to achieve the same result. Why? Because Kenya is changing, my friend. Right. Kenya is changing. Right. We're talking, we look at a clip now. This is what uh, the funeral of the, the late Sarita Shitanda, where we talked about uh, the meeting at State House and what uh, transpired. The strongest indication you gave here, there yet, that there could have been a meeting and these issues were discussed. Let, let's have a look at what you said. And uh, they were telling me, you see, now that the other side have appointed uh, mm -hmm. Modrama That's not the one. and uh, okay. Mishimboko, I think we should appoint Moses Kuria <laughs> and, uh, and Baba Yao. Right, that is not, um, that is not their clip uh, we exactly wanted to look at. We'll go if back to that clip. If it wasn't uh, a serious thing, it would be hilarious, right, actually. Right, we'll go back to that clip shortly. But because let's, let's talk about what you said there, that is at the National Prayer uh, Breakfast. First, do you think that, that it was right for you to say that? And this is why some people in the Code Coalition, in fact, the Code Coalition, have been calling you a stumbling block. They have given people, or MPs, to come uh, to, to, to start a dialogue with uh, the, the government or the executive yet you appeared to almost demean the characters uh, or to look down upon the characters that were supposed to lead these negotiations for court you see uh, i think you're not putting it properly you should say they have said i'm the headliner that's what they've said yes yeah so that, to put it bluntly you, you see the people carrying this uh, narrative about uh, you know uh, william ruto is a hardliner maybe uhuru kenyatta is softer there are uh, two sides to this thing. These are people who have a hangover of this uh, Nusumukata nonsense. Let me tell you, Hussein. We made a liber deliberate decision. There is one command in Jubilee. There is one narrative. We read from the same script. You know, there are no two sides as far as we are concerned. Our position as Jubilee is one. We want to move this process forward in a manner that is predictable in a manner that has the backing of the constitution. So such remarks though that we saw like uh, that was on Friday, are they not right or justified to say that about you? For the remarks you made? Well, it is for them to uh, interpret the way they want. You know, I am used to all these manner of interpretations being made about me, which, uh, but you know, our position is very clear. You know, we want a process that is logical, that is predictable, that is within the law and within the constitution. Okay, we have the clip now about the dialogue uh, at the status of the meeting. Uh, that's again, that is the wrong clip. We're talking about the clip about this. You talked about a proposal that court came uh, uh, to state house, the court leadership, that is Moses Wetangula. Okay, there we go. We no, have that's it. That's not the one. Yeah. Said have appointed uh, no that's not the one all right well, let's just forget about that but the clip you say uh, there is a there was a proposal by the court coalition this was at uh, Sarita Shitanda's funeral uh, the late Sarita Shitanda you said court proposed a, a team for dialogue you had them and you had your own proposal first of all what exactly transpired at that meeting and what agreement came, came out of that meeting if any you see Hussein uh, uh, let me just say one thing. Mm -hmm. Our friends in court were invited for a luncheon.
because the president of Korea was in town. And after that, we had uh, an engagement, right? There was no agreement on anything. There was only one agreement that when we, uh, when, when, the when, when the president of Korea leaves, we should organize a meeting, right? Mm -hmm. But I am very ashamed as a national leader on all our behalf of what happened thereafter because we had almost a week of headline you know of, of things that really should not be you know we are we are we are parents my friend we are some of us are grandparents you know how can it be that we have degenerated to you know when i was a young man uh, whenever I wanted, whenever you know, whenever we wanted to boost the the, the believability of what you wanted to say, it, you wanted to say, you said Akiamungu, you know, because you, you it was a, a, a phrase that was, and, and that is what seems to be happening here. That I am willi willing, I'm willing to, sh I'm willing to, to swear. swear yeah. How do you swear to a lie that there was an agreement when there was none? Did they have a proposal? What was their proposal? You see, th that is that is something I do not want to discuss because it is very embarrassing. But there was a proposal. National, national leaders, you know, we, we can degenerate into, we cannot be gentlemen, you know, we cannot be decent. That uh, we are looking for occasions to score against each other, you know, you know, they said this, let me, let me say they lied so that I can get uh, mileage. You know, I think that is really petty and, right. and uh, degenerate. And Fair I, enough, but still, was there a proposal from court? And like you said, did you have a proposal? Our proposal was simple. You know, let's stick to the constitution. If you want, we have the uh, committee in parliament. We have the legal and uh, uh, legal and justice affairs, affairs uh, committee in yeah. parliament. Instead of having a parallel uh, group of people outside parliament, why don't we go to the legal and uh, justice committee in parliament? That was that was uh, what what was said. That was your proposal. That is what you told them. That, that was what, the, the discussion did not last 10 minutes, my friend. But that is what you told them. Yeah. So was there an agreement after that? There was no agreement. And there even, was no and agreement even, and even for they, you to have five people? There was none. I mean, it, and, and I, am, I am ashamed to say there was none because, I mean, it's very embarrassing that I am saying the former prime minister lied. You know, he's a grandfather. And, and what, are we, what are we portraying as leaders, you know? That, he, on the uh, other hand, says he can swear that there was an agreement and that is why he that is why he says uh, he, at, he he adopted a very uh, soft tone during their rally at Uhuru Park uh, during Madaraka Day celebrations and he said he expected nothing of the same and he was shocked when the Jubilee leadership or the executive in Afraha Stadium said there that there was no such agreement with the state of center state military on saying there was no such agreement I think let's leave it to the people of Kenya. You know, it is really a tragedy that uh, we can uh, degenerate into this. And I don't think, uh, I mean, it, I, I feel ashamed that I have to say the former Prime Minister lied. You know, that is really something that I, I, I say with a lot of remorse. You know, it is, it is a terrible thing. Okay. We shouldn't, as leaders at this level, we shouldn't be engaging ourselves in that kind of thing. Right. And I'm saying, I am really embarrassed on all our behalf. It's not something that should have happened. Okay. What is the end game then, according to you, where you stand in government? At the end of the day, people are losing property, people have their rights to demonstrate, and they're saying they're going to demonstrate. You said very well the country image is being spoiled, the economy is hurting. Still, you maintain that this has to be done through parliament. Still, they maintain they want dialogue, and then after that maybe it can be done uh, in Parliament. My friend. You are the government. Yep. At the end of the day, Correct. you have a responsibility to the people of Kenya. Correct. What is the end game? What is going to happen? We went to the people of Kenya and told them we want a people-centered, people-driven constitution. The only safe and predictable way of going about this is to stick to the constitution. Right? And let me tell you, uh, Hussein, um, uh, our, our brothers in, uh, in court 
we have a parliamentary process either in the committee of chef konga or even in the one that was uh, 150 members of parliament from both sides that has been rejected by the coalition because they don't want dialogue because initially they were saying we are the ones who don't want dialogue when we told them okay we are ready to talk let's to go parliament then. let's go let's go to let's go to parliament you have your own members you have you, you have these members they say no we don't want to dialogue this way because if we go to parliament there are two ways we can dialogue in parliament number one we can either use whatever committee that exists or number two we can have a select committee of members of parliament even if you are talking about the IPPG my friend the IPPG was members of parliament because the moment we say we are not going to follow the constitution we want an extra constitution uh, mechanism we are setting up this country for failure the IPPG was also a member of parliament yes members of parliament correct their nominees right now are members of parliament there are five nominees that's why we are saying let us have a credible parliamentary process in that, whatever manner that they want okay because you have to uh, finish up that they're not going to do they said like I told you you are the government people are looking for leadership what should happen will, we, will the country remain with this stalemate hardline position you see uh, the big thing uh, Hussein is Kod are actually running away from 2017 contest they are running away because we deliberately as Jubilee want the 2017 election to be about issues about issues of electricity about issues of roads about issues of the rail about issues of uh, hospitals and uh, medicine and those kind of things they want this 2017 to be about the constitution how to create more offices how to uh, the, the same old narrative that we've always had and I am asking myself for heaven's sake when will we have in this country a contest that is about ordinary people okay. that is about building roads that is about uh, what what happened I mean court instead of harassing the country and tormenting the country with the uh, with the demonstration they should be developing an alternative agenda for Kenya okay I'll you know that and 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 it is my hope that eventually we will be gentlemen enough to say I may not like what the Constitution says I may not what the provisions of the Constitution are saying but I will be patriotic enough you know because they say patriotism is standing with your country all the time okay and standing so with your government when they deserve it so it doesn't seem like there's a way out of this yet I want to look at uh, a final clip here this again was uh, the funeral uh, of the late uh, uh, Suita Shitanda yes we have that yes what is the clip of my brother Jirongo Zasungine anakasirika na mimi kwa sababu zamani nilikuwa muti yake ya mkono sasa anakasirika na mimi baba anaona huyu ambaye alikuwa muti yangu ya mkono alipitia wapi hapa mpaka aka lakini unajua my friend ni kujipanga na nilikwambia okay i told you au nilikasirikia ya nini na sasa hii ni maneno ya Mungu ama namna gani jameni Hey. Right, this came uh, weeks after the, on the rec in the record mass in Nairobi. Uh, Jirongo had accused you of having something to do with Jacob Juma's death. Uh, and I'd like to look at a tweet that uh, was, I'm sure you may have heard of it, was out there widely. I know you, you talked about this. Uh, at Kabetes, that was his Twitter handle. Uh, the late Jacob Juma at 12.34 p.m. on the 10th of December 2015 tweeted, and I quote, the person who is obsessed with plans to kill me is William Ruto. I know that my assassination was discussed on Tuesday. My question to you is, did you have anything to do with that? As the late Jacob Juma claimed, as Jirongo claimed, and why you? Well, I think uh, we lost Jacob Juma. That he would be best place to respond to your question. And maybe 
you should look for some time, get Jirongo here, so that he can tell the country what he means. But I am sure, as sure as uh, the sun is going to rise tomorrow, that the killers of Jacob Juma will be brought to book. Mm -hmm. I, I am hoping that they will be brought to book and uh, they will be known. I want to tell you and to tell Kenyans and to tell the country that I have nothing to do with anything to do with the life or death of Jacob Juma. Juma. But you see, I have become uh, the opposition uh, punching bag, so to speak. In fact, the other day, um, when uh, you must have read this, uh, Hussein, when uh, Moses Wetangula had the problems with his wife and he went to report at the police station, one of the newspapers wrote and said, uh, Wetangula's wife was seen in my office before they went and fought with Wetangula. My friend, I don't know Moses Wetangula's wife. I have never met her. We have never, we have never met anywhere. But there you are. William Ruto is responsible for talking to Moses Wetangula's wife so that they can go and fight. Really? <laughs> this is, uh, that, that is the, the, the opposition for you. They have never found an occasion where they don't want to link me with anything. Oh, William Ruto is the hardliner, or I don't know. I mean, really, let's be, let's be honest to, 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 to ourselves. Right. And let me say, mm -hmm. we are determined, Hussein, to make the next election not about us, the leaders, about the people. Mm -hmm. We are determined that the next election must be about issues that will make the ordinary young people of this country have access to jobs. Mm -hmm. We will stay focused on building the railway, on expanding our infrastructure, on making sure that our hospitals have equipment, on making sure that we connect more people to electricity, on ensuring that we mechanize our farming. That is our focus. Right. And I challenge our friends in court to leave the tweaks, to leave the whistles, to forget about mass action, and develop an alternative agenda for Kenya so that we can compete. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. as it is now, what they are trying to do is they want to change the issues that, we will, that will inform the next election. They want it to be about oh, changing their constitution so that we can, because they have a, a huge co coalition of people there, they want to get everybody a small, a small seat somewhere. I don't know, you will be prime minister, you will be deputy prime minister, you will be this, you will be the other. They want us to go that direction. Okay. And, and let me also uh, conclude by saying, that we are concerned about this country. We are concerned about Kenya. And it should be every leader's responsibility to be concerned. I want Code to ask themselves, do they want to see, and for how long, the kind of dest destruction that is going on in the country in the name of demonstrations against IEBC? Okay. Wouldn't it be wise for them, instead of pulling out their members from committees, legitimate constitutional legal committees in parliament that would uh, engage this matter and wanting us to go and have mm. something parallel in the bush somewhere. And let me tell you Hussein, yeah. for that. the reason why we, we, we threw out the old constitution is because it had an imperial presidency where the president was everything. Okay. You know, in fact, he, he determined, he, he, teachers were looking for salary, they had to look for Moi. Right. If uh, he was the chancellor of all universities, he appointed all the commissions. He did, I don't, that, we have gotten rid of that. Right. We now my, have, my yeah. we now have independent, we now have shared power. We have a president with power, sufficient power. We have devolved government. We have parliament, we have the judiciary, we have independent institutions. Okay. And now let me tell you, lastly, yeah. if you tell us you have a problem mm -hmm. with independent institutions, because IEBC made a decision on the OCOA thing, you have a problem with the, the judiciary, because they made a certain decision. You have a problem with parliament, because they have a certain majority. Now you have even a problem with the people, because you are now saying you don't even trust the people to elect a president. You want uh, a parliamentary system where the leader of government is elected in parliament because you have a problem with the people. You don't trust them to make a decision on who will run their affairs. Right. Surely, <coughs> you cannot have a problem with everybody and still remain a Democrat. Okay. 
I want to go back to this. You, you said it very clearly. You had nothing to do with the death of Jacob Juma. Uh, even in our uh, feedback, because of this SMS that he, the late Jacob Juma, the tweet, that, uh, whatever he tweeted, the late uh, Jacob Juma, so many people have been talking about it. Now that investigations are going on, have the police questioned you since Jacob Juma directly? When the police want a statement from me, I will give it freely. Any day, any time, anywhere. But they haven't questioned you yet. They have not asked me for a statement. I, I will gladly give my statement. Okay. Yeah. So I will gladly do that because I'm a law-abiding citizen and I want to help in getting to the bottom of this uh, uh, death of uh, uh, Juma or indeed any other Kenyan. All right. Deputy President William Ruto, Your Excellency, thank you so much for making time for the big question. As always, there's a lot more we'd have wanted uh, to ask uh, the Deputy President, but obviously, as always, time is not enough. We can talk for days with the Deputy President, but we really appreciate you uh, making time for the big question. Really, thank, thank you. Thank you, Hussein. It's always a pleasure to engage you and to engage the people of Kenya in trying to create better understanding for the issues that are affecting our country. Thank you so much, His Excellency, the Deputy President. Keep talking to us on double two four double two on Twitter. Hashtag the big question. We'll be back after this break.